So I recently made a PMC ring for a lady at work um, because she had this lovely piece of opal that she had polished um, and wanted in a ring. Now it wasn't as straightforward as I thought so I'm going to show both the failed attempt and the successful attempt. So here's the piece of opal. Um, now she uh, polished that one and wanted it in a ring and so I looked into how to make a, an opal into a ring. You can't actually fire the opal so the trick is you need to be able to create a setting for it that you can put the opal into afterwards. So the way I did that was to use this um, flat uh, wire which is a fine silver uh, bezel wire. Now when I did this the first time I didn't have the join um, in the spot that I really wanted. It should really not be on a corner. And the other thing that I did as well, I was worried about how tall it was compared to the stone. So I was, I bent um, the bottom of it to make it a little shorter. And um, that actually wasn't the best idea. Now to join it, you just basically paint on some PMC um, to create a nice smooth joint and then fire it like I'm doing here. You want to see that um, apricot glow and that means that you're firing it really well. Uh, now that fired okay but from there on in my um, torch was not firing for me. So now that I've fired though that piece of um, fine silver bezel wire I needed to have a bottom for it so I sat it on um, I used a five card stack and sat it on some PMC I cut it directly um, in line with the PMC base now I did change that design up for the second attempt I'm wetting the PMC there to sort of smooth it um, I'm also adding some slip, which is just the, you know, really wetted down PMC, just to help um, join it onto the uh, wire there. So now that I've done that, I need to make the actual ring itself. Um, I wanted to keep it quite thin. Um, so I kept that sort of line really nice and thin and just really simple uh, because I wanted the opal to be the main feature of the ring. So you sort of try and cut it on an angle um, and then you know wet and join that the two pieces together. Um, I did add a bit of water onto it because it was a little bit um, cracked and things but as you can see sometimes when you add too much water and you let it dry it can separate so that join can separate and that's what happened for this first attempt so that's okay you can patch it as I've done here um, and so I added a piece of PMC you know once you wet the two pieces of dry PMC and add, add some wet PMC it takes pretty well now, because of how deeply I had set that bezel wire and the fact that I had bent the bottom edge of the bezel wire with my pliers, um, I needed to carve out bits of the um, center to make it fit, make the opal fit, because the bezel wire needs to be taller than the stone so that you can bend it back over it. So I'm using a few techniques to um, smooth out the ring part. I have these um, like needle files, which are good for taking off larger amounts of PMC at a time. Um, and then I have these flat um, pieces of sandpaper. Um, and you can see there I have a flat file. That's in a set of sort of um, files that I have that are great for PMC. So there is a bit of a bulge at the top of the ring there but um, that is actually okay because of the fact that I am sitting the um, bezel 
part on top of it so I wasn't too concerned about that um, but what I did find is the way that I did this initial ring um, because I bent the bottom of the um, bezel wire because I was concerned about it being too high and then I had to set you know push it into the PMC it was actually lower than I needed it to be and so I, I wouldn't have been able to set the, the stone in it so so I decided to make these prongs um, to bend over the stone because it wasn't going to sit low enough for me to bend that bezel wire over there um, once I was done with that design so um, that was what I was doing with these little sections here I attached them to the bottom of the ring um, you know underneath the section where I was going to put the stone and put four prongs on there and sort of just had them sitting straight up because what I would be doing in this version would be fire it once it was fired I could then bend the metal over the stone to hold it in place um, although that was the idea of it anyway so you know I'm adding um, a bit of water to the sections to attach it, um, a little bit of slip. I attach it to the bottom of this because that whole bottom section will then um, sit on some slip and then onto the ring itself and it will just keep those prongs really fastened onto the ring. So I fired and fired and fired thinking that it was going okay but it just something wasn't right it just wasn't getting that um, peachy color that you saw in that earlier video I tried filling my torch again nothing the flame eventually just went out I fired as much as I could picked up the ring and it broke guys 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 all right so you've seen the footage of the ring it was all going really really well it was being fired um, now I was filling up my um, butane torch and it just didn't seem right something seemed different um, it wasn't making the same noise as usual when I'm filling it up um, the but butane gas I normally get a bit of liquid coming out um, you know as it's spraying there's just like a little bit of runoff that didn't happen either I wasn't really sure if that meant anything um, I kept going I kept you know persisting trying to fill up the the torch and fired it like and and sort of fired the ring and everything but it wasn't getting hot enough. Um, I could tell like the, I couldn't get it to go orange. So normally when you start firing your PMC, you get that bit of burn off that happens. Um, you know, the initial sort of um, bonding medium starts to flame or smoke or whatever and burn off and then it um, gets almost molten um, hot, you know, this sort of peachy orange color. I could not for the life of me get it hot enough and it seemed like it just wasn't there wasn't enough gas in the torch so I thought I'm not I'm not trusting this even though I, I torched it for four minutes and generally speaking when I've um, torch fired the PMC in the past about three minutes is about right um, as long as it gets to that you know golden orangey color and it just didn't so I've tried filling it up again and tried torching it again another four minutes just to try and really give it a good try same thing happened the torch just didn't seem to be filling up it didn't get hot it didn't get orange um, so I just I, I wasn't really sure because I mean I had been 
holding the flame pretty close to it and over, I mean, a total of eight minutes. So I thought, well, maybe it is fired. Um, let it cool down a bit and picked it up. As soon as I picked it up, one of the prongs just broke right off. And I was like, oh God, no, because, you know, um, I'd done all that work and it would have been a real pain to try and get the prong back on and wasn't even sure if I could. And, you know, I was thinking, sugar, that means it hasn't really fired and that, that part was really thin, it should have really fired. And pressed it just to get an idea of, like, if it, there was any, um, you know, if it fired or if it was strength to it or whatever, and um, and then the whole thing just broke, so into about five different pieces. So I was, I was so dirty. <laughs> um, you know, when you've been working so hard on something, and then at the last minute, just it all falls apart. Um, and I wasn't well either, so I was pushing my body to keep working on this thing because I really wanted to get it finished um, and you know at, when you're at that firing point like that's virtually there there's you know you, you do a little bit of sort of um, work with it afterwards but virtually it's done at that point yeah so for it to fall apart I just had to put it down and just leave and not think about it again um, and it prompted me, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to look into getting um, a good quality torch. I'm pretty sure, I can't remember to be honest the, the cost of my torch, but it wasn't much. It wasn't much, I don't think. And it seems to take a long time to, to fill and I can't tell if it's filling up. So I thought I'm going to just look around and look for feedback and find um, you know, a really good quality torch. So I did a look around, found a few different torches. Um, I found this particular torch on Amazon that had some awesome feedback, um, I think four and a half stars or something. And I've got the listing up here. It's called a Blazer Big Shot GT8000. Um, now, I think on the US site, it was something like, 50, 60 dollars, you know, US dollars. Um, up there a little, not not bad though, pretty good. Um, and I thought, oh great, that's, you know, I'll go for that one. Um, I'll just need to find a, a seller that I can buy it from because we can't use the US Amazon anymore since the GST changes. Looked up the Australian Amazon, the same torch, 260 Australian dollars. So, yeah, that wasn't happening. Um, <laughs> I thought, uh, our Amazon is really not fantastic yet. Um, it is new-ish, so hopefully it improves, but right now, no, no. So I kept looking around and I found the same one on a website that sounds so dodgy, um, <laughs> called Beefy's Bongs. So. Mm. <laughs> That's going to be interesting showing up on my business statement. Uh, why did you need to buy something from Beefy's Bongs, Lauren? Uh, oh, it was for PMC, I promise. Sure. Um, so anyway, I, uh, that's on its way. I'm going to do a do-over. Fingers crossed it works. And you guys are going to see what happens. So stay tuned. <laughs> So the entire ring ended up breaking and I had to remake the thing. Um, as I mentioned, I got a whole new torch. Um, I had issues trying to fire with that torch as well. The whole thing was just not working out for me. But I was really glad that I redid it because there were some things that I changed that I'm not sure if it would have worked out as well if I had have used that first um, ring. So I managed to make sure that join wasn't on one of the corners um, this time. I kept plenty of room for the stone. Um, you, wanna, you want the stone to easily fall out of this bezel wire, um, but it to still form pretty, you know, consistently around the shape of it. 
Um, so I think that there's a, a really fine line of um, too much bezel wire and not enough. And I guess that's going to be trial and error. But this seemed to work out okay for this stone. So you can see that lovely peachy colour coming through. Um, so I'm firing the bezel wire. I didn't um, bend the bottom of the bezel wire this time because I knew that was an issue last time. So I just joined the bezel wire. I didn't um, you know, use my pliers on it or anything to, to bend that bottom of it up. Um, I just you know, folded it around the stone and joined it with some slip and fired it and that was it. So then I created the ring. So I'm just rolling it out there. I put a bit of water because it was having some little micro cracks uh, just from working the clay. Now again, just cut that on an angle. I'm not having much luck with my cuts at the moment. Um, it seemed to have a gap every time I do it now and I, when I started out it was like working out really well for me but that's okay because you can come in as I've done here with a little bit of extra PMC and some water. Um, just make sure that you know it doesn't crack when it's drying I guess is the key. But I was drying it um, with my heat gun and that seemed to work out really well. So again, I'm rolling out a piece for the bottom of the, um, where the bezel wire is going. And this is, you know, that base for the stone to sit on. So instead of going right up to the bezel wire this time, I left like a mill around there. So there was a little bit of a lip. And that was because there was a, not a very nice join between the base and the wire last time. And I thought this could be a, a design feature to have that little lip. And it worked out pretty good, so I was pretty happy with that. So I've made my ring and, you know, there was just some spots that needed some fixing up. So the slip is perfect for any little micro cracks or just to smooth things out. Um, I ended up getting this sanding block from Bunnings. Uh, which is a hardware shop in Australia um, and I really recommend these sanding blocks for this type of work. I got the um, smallest grit that I could um, and I think it was, oh, I can't remember the grit, maybe 80 or something like that. It was a still a, you know, not as fine as you could get from PMC but um, good for that purpose to really give you a smooth um, edge to your ring. And you can see I've got these little like toothpick sanders which are fantastic. I got those from Fire Mountain Gems and they've just got um, a grit on the end of the sander and you can get into fine areas. Um, those little pads um, I got on Fire Mountain Gems as well. So it's just a little sanding pad and they have um, a multitude of different grits that you can use which are great. So this is the base part for the bezel uh, wire and I'm sanding that. I'll try and find out the actual grit that I did have because I can't recall the grit number um, but I just got the finest one they had. Uh, then I, I popped some slip onto the top of that and I figured instead of like last time I actually pushed it into the wet clay the bezel wire but it went down too far so this time I thought I'll just attach it using some of the slip and that way it won't go down too far and I should have enough bezel wire to press over the stone because the idea is once this is fired you use your um, tools to basically smooth that wire, the bezel wire, over the stone to encapsulate it into the ring because you can't actually fire the opal. So I just kept adding a little bit of slip on both sides of the bezel wire um, and that gave it enough surface to grab. Once it was fired it then you know became one piece. 
and again used a bit of slip to attach the um, top to the ring itself and you can see the opal sits in there pretty well with not too much gap in there now I was a bit keen to get started and if you saw the ring actually popped and burst open and that was because I didn't dry it well enough um, I was after having a couple of failed attempts I was really keen to get this done um, so I should have dried it a lot better than I did and that's what can happen if you don't. The second attempt of firing was fine though and the ring fired really well. So then I used some of my little um, like microfiles to file the inside of the ring. Um, it, it was a little bit tighter than I wanted, it shrunk a little bit more than I was wanting for the ring size. So that just helped me um, make it a little larger and more in keeping with the ring size that she needed. And then you just um, burnish it and keep it, um, like make it really nice and smooth. That pushes all of the um, silver flat because I think basically the molecules sort of stand up once they're fired and the burnishing and the um, wire filing it, it just smooths everything flat and you get to see that silver color again I even used one of the sanders a bit because I thought that would help to really help smooth things over and then um, came in afterwards with the burnisher to finish it off and really smooth those edges I wanted this one to be highly polished um, you can just you know use your wire brush and keep it um, give it a kind of a matte you know brushed finish uh, but this one I actually wanted it just really polished so then you can see I've put the stone in now and I'm using my burnisher to try and slowly push that wire around the stone um, and you just do it bit by bit uh, don't go in too hard too fast uh, try if possible to do it by the corners apparently um, these corners were quite sharp and so I was having a lot of trouble with those uh, I would have liked to have pushed it in more tightly around the corners but I did the best I could um, there was little tiny gaps but I just couldn't get it any closer but the stone was well captured in there um, it wasn't going anywhere so I was glad about that and after everything I went through, I was just glad to finally have a, a finished ring that held the stone. So, um, and this is just a polishing cloth with impregnation on one side and just a cloth on the other side. So look, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do want to capture a stone in a ring, um, this is the way to do it. Just using that fine silver bezel wire. Um, it is tricky but I hope you got something out of my mistakes um, and my successes and give it a go. All right, bye craft nerds.